and on a day when the Jaish e Mohammed terrorist was hanged in India, Pakistan once again betrayed its deep seated involvement with terror. Ironically, this was exposed by its own agencies. They raided two Lashkar training camps and unearthed clinching proof of Pakistan's role in the 26 11 Mumbai attacks. Well, we have with us uh, three eminent guests as well in our news studios who will talk to us about uh, this Pakistani lie being nailed yet again. And also, of course, uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, Ajmal, uh, Ajmal Kasab uh, and also we'll talk about Afsal Guru's hanging as well that took place earlier uh, this morning. Uh, let me pose a question, of course, to KG Suresh. Uh, Suresh, we've uh, seen Pakistani's lie being nailed yet again. And, uh, well, we all know that Pakistan was involved in the 26-11 attacks. What next? Do, do we need any more proof? Yes, proof will continue to come in, but we all know the truth. And what next? Well, I think uh, we always knew about it, but unless Pakistan's masters, that is Washington, realizes this and takes action, till then I think that, uh, you see, uh, not much can be done about it, because India cannot go for a military confrontation with the Pakistanis that's certainly not advisable for the simple reason that you don't have a civilian government in power there. The civilian government, the so-called civilian government is totally depending on army. The army and ISI are very powerful there and nuclear weapons are still with them. So you can't go for a head-on confrontation with them. That's not advisable. So what we can do is uh, strengthen our own security and then try to prevent as much terrorist attack as possible and try to internationally isolate Pakistan. We have been able to do it to a great extent after 26-11 and we have to continue with that and unless the United States realizes, I am really surprised that because despite Osama bin Laden being found there and so many instances of Pakistanis being involved in Afghanistan in attacks on American troops there, but still America considers Pakistan as a frontline state against terrorism and unless America realizes it and takes action till then I don't see much happening from the Pakistani side the international community will have to pressurize will have to isolate them and we also should stop expecting that there would be a change of heart on the part of Pakistanis right. that is just not you know uh, possible Okay, okay. We have with us also Sushil Kumar, senior uh, Supreme Court advocate as well as Afkal, uh, Afsal Guru's uh, lawyer. So my question to you is, of course, you have said that uh, Afsal Guru did not receive a fair trial. Why do you say that? Well, you look at the judicial record in the trial court. Who was defending him? Hardly anyone. You compare it with the, uh, the other case, Kasab's case. State gave him the best lawyers in trial court, high court and supreme court. Same should have happened with him also. Mm -hmm. Then you could say that he was fairly defended, fairly tried. Once the record is spoiled in the trial court, thereafter is, is a fait accompli. What, what will you argue in the higher courts? Same record will go up and up and up. That's my grievance. Sanjay, you want to say something? What Mr. S uh, Kumar is saying is a specific ground in US law inadequate counsel. If in a capital case there is inadequate counsel, then it does cast a shadow on the appellate process, no doubt. When it leads to but a mistrial. It, the appellate courts have in the US at times intervened and sent it back for a retrial. But all this is now past. There has been an examination of the record. And I have no doubt that the appellate courts did take into account the uh, incapacity at the trial stage and it did try to remedy it. Notwithstanding everything, I am morally certain that there was Afzal's complicity in the matter. I, I also what understand that Afzal Guru was uh, allowed to ask questions and, uh, uh, and, uh, and cross-examine as well. Is, is that correct? Yes, but uh, he is not a law graduate. And uh, even if he was a law graduate, a uh, man who is his own lawyer is his worst enemy. Mm -hmm. You need professional independent advice at that point of time. I don't, I am not talking about Afzal Guru, but I would like to see a day when every person accused of a capital crime in India 
is adequately defended at the trial stage and through the appeal process. Okay. Okay. I am not a legal expert but I just wish to add here that you see there have been instances in this country where the higher courts have you know uh, questioned the entire trial process, ordered retrials and even acquitted uh, people who have been convicted, uh, even death sentence have been given. Those In this case also, some people were acquitted by the Supreme Court. So, I think that to entirely say that, you know, this happens in all cases, uh, I, I somehow tend to disagree with it. Uh, so, yes, uh, of course, some valid points there raised by Subramanian Swami. You are talking about zero tolerance, you are talking about how uh, terrorism has no color and then you have several people who have, uh, who have, who have not been uh, sent to the gallows. In fact, you have uh, uh, the killers of Rajiv Gandhi and you have se several other such cases. So, the government is serious about, uh, about, uh, you know, about terrorism and is serious about uh, being a zero tolerance state. Then certainly the law should apply everywhere. Yeah, but uh, they cannot do it on a single day. I mean, let us give them some time. If they are actually proactive about it and they want to shed this uh, image that uh, they are very soft towards terrorists and that uh, the image of being a soft state, then uh, let us see how they, if they just remain confined to these two as Kasab and uh, that means that they are just pandering to the, uh, you know, uh, the public, uh, this thing. They let them, whether, whether they do it with the Rajiv Gandhi's killers, whether they do it with uh, the killers of uh, Ben Singh, uh, that all needs to be seen in the days to come. Mr. Kumar, should we get rid of the death penalty completely? No one should be hanged to death? Well, many countries have abolished it already, where it started first. But that's a value judgment. Hmm. If you think that deterrence can come only by finishing a life, well, that's your philosophy. But there is no empirical evidence to show that death sentence really deters others. Because the terrorists, as it was being said earlier, I have done cases where they carried a cyanide pill. Before you can catch him, he's out. He's condemned himself to death already. You can't even try him. The question is, who will get deterred? Hmm. People you think will get deterred will not commit these crimes. And those at whom you are aiming, they are beyond deterrence. So it's a very difficult question to answer. There is no evidence to show that death sentence has ever deterred the crime. Why are, why are we forgetting that this death sentence is not just for terrorists? Hmm. See, Section 302 is for all, all, murders. all, all murders. All murders. Yes. Even in the uh, uh, recent rape case, rape come murder case, uh, the entire nation has been demanding that. So, let us not assume that uh, because everybody who comes here and commits a terrorist crime, he, uh, you know, uh, has a cyanide pill with him and he is a fidain, so we should not be, you know, uh, you know, uh, giving death sentence at all. I somehow don't agree with this presumption. Uh, death so, sentence so, so is a believe it is death not death. just for terrorism, but also for all heinous crimes, all brutal murders, all cold-blooded murders, and we have specifically provisions to ensure that it is not abused. We have a provision that it would be given only in the rarest of rare cases. And in a country like India, where you are facing, you know, problems across, uh, uh, violence is there in every part of the country, you need, uh, you know, to have such strong deterrence not just for terrorism, it is for to maintain law and order in the society, there has to be a punishment which would deter. It's not just about terrorists, it's about, you cannot have one law just for the terrorists and one law for others. Killing a human you know, being, that has to be punished. Okay, killing a human being has to be punished. Uh, uh, all right, we are going to wrap the show on that uh, on that note. Subramaniam Swami, thank you so much. Uh, KG Suresh, uh, Sanjay Hegde and Sushil Kumar as well. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the show tonight and sharing your views and perspectives. With that, of course, it's a wrap on uh, this edition of The Bulletin. We hope uh, uh, you liked our coverage, our continuous no-break coverage of the Apsal Guru hanging episode. Thank you so much for watching.